here is a verse for everyone. The verse goes, some confused individuals are not at peace, which means they do things inappropriately or poorly. They pray to spirits by sacrificing swine and sheep. China has a deleterious custom of the West is free of, what is it? The Chinese refer to funerals as white events and mariachis as red events. Chinese refer to funerals as white events and mariachis are red events. White events are deaths, while red events are congratulatory occasions. Whether it is death or mariage, the Chinese will slaughter animals such as chickens and ducks and offer them to ghosts and spirits. Have you not seen people bring chickens to temples for local city gods? These things are inappropriate and do not accord with the drama. They pray before images of gods saying, Please bless my deceased father and mother, older or younger brother, so that he or she does not fall into the house. After a few days, I will kill a pig or a sheep as an offering to you. The swine or sheep is their bed. Karma of resentment comes from killing in past lives. Killing is a type of karma that creates resentment. Having killed it in past lives, you kill again in this lifetime. Originally, the resentment from killing was created in lives past. But further killing in this lifetime is like adding another layer to a frost on top of snow. Like frost added on prior snow. The snow earlier was already cold, but now another layer of frost is added on top. So it is even colder. Frost is that which falls before a snowfall. Do not mistake swine and sheep for what they are. Do not be too sure that swine is swine and sheep is sheep. For a few thousand times, they have changed faces. These pigs and lambs come from people. People can come, can become pigs and pigs can become people. Did you notice those in a country who enjoy eating pork look like pigs? Those in a country who enjoy eating beef will have eyes like a cow's. In general, people in a certain country will look like whatever they enjoy eating. For instance, the Thais do not like to eat pork or mutton, but they like eating frog meat which is why the Thais have eyes similar to frogs. People of each country have affinities with a certain species, so we do not know how many times people have changed their faces, like cart wheels that turn and return to repay. The wheels of a car turn and turn. The Suragama Sutra says that sheep can become people again, since sheep can become people, why is it that pigs cannot become people? Not only can sheep and swine become people and creature, any creature can become human by changing the shell of their body. You do not recognize them because they have changed bodies. The spirit moves from a human body to a pig's body from a pig's body to a human body, they exchange houses. This is like us moving from some high-class sky, uh, skyscraper to wooden shacks, the area with the worst housing. As human beings, it is as if we are living in high-rises, but when you become pigs or lambs, it is as if you are living in some small wooden shack some dilapidated housing. Hence, it says, like cart wheels that turn and return to repay, seas of clouds swallowing the sky so that there is nowhere to hide. 
Someone who does not understand considers different living beings individual species. Someone who has the power to know past lives know that all beings are connected in this great ocean of space, including places where no one sees. Imperceptible seas of clouds swirl into the sky so that there is nowhere to hide. No one can hide from cause and effect because they exist forever in space. You reap whatever effects you sow. There will be a consequence for killing. Whatever karma you did exists. So do not bother praying to ghosts and spirits. Why is that? Killing, harming, and making sacrifices do not even have a tiny hairbreadth of power with which to benefit the deceased. The swine and sheep, and sheep you killed and harmed. The evil ghosts and devil spirits that you worship do not help the deceased a bit. Such acts only bite up the conditions of offenses so that they grow ever deeper and heavier. The deceased might have been due to increase his potential for sagehood or gain birth among humans or gods in his next life or in the future. Someone who in this life or in the next life receives the benefits of your created merit. He or she will become reborn in the human realm or the heavens. But if his family commits offenses in his name, his good rebirth will be negatively impacted, debated about, and delayed. The deceased will be negatively affected. He goes to the house to agree with Lord Yama. For instance, Lord Yama says, On your behalf, your family members slaughtered and offered many pigs to ghosts and spirits. The deceased will definitely argue. That is none of my business. I do not tell them to kill. I cannot do anything about their killing. They hold a debate there. Unfortunately, there are no defense attorneys in the house, so they must argue for themselves. They should have been reborn in the heavens quickly, but what their families did delayed them for a long time. How much more would that be the case for people on the verge of death who during their lives have failed to plant event, you know, even a few good rules? Each offender has to undergo the bad destinies according to his own karma. How could anyone bear to have relatives add to that karma? So, we should not kill or do evil for someone who passed away. We should be vegetarians, recite the Buddha's name and recite the sutras. For instance, that would be like having a neighbor add a few more things to a load of over a hundred pounds being carried by someone who had already traveled a long distance and who had not eaten for three days. If that extra weight were added, that person's burden would become even more unbearable. The additional items from the neighbor all of a sudden increased his load. Originally, this individual has offense karma, so you should create blessings for him to reduce his offense karma. But not only do you not create blessings for him, but you kill on his behalf. He was already unable to walk from carrying so much stuff and not eating for three days, and yet you now add some more items to his increasingly heavy burden. This is analogous to how someone should fall into the house but you kill on his behalf so that his stay in the house lengthens. We talked about how someone who is carrying a load of over a hundred pounds had traveled a long distance and had not eaten for three days. If he suddenly meets a labor who adds a few more things for him, then his burden becomes even heavier and unbearable. The load the man carries represents the five skandhas. The 100-pound load represents the ten evils. 
encountering a neighbor of a sudden. It's symbolic of his family members who help him slaughter after swine and sheep. The few more items added are his increasingly heavy offense comma. His burden becomes heavier and his offense comma becomes heavier. Sutra Word honored one, I see that beings of Jambu Fipa will themselves receive the benefit of any good deeds they are able to do that accord with the Buddha's teachings. That holds true even when the deeds are as small as a strand of hair, a drop of water, a grain of sand, or a mud of dust. After that had been said, an elder named Great Eloquence rose in the assembly. He had realized non-production long ago and was appearing in the body of an elder only to teach and transform those in the ten directions. Commentary World Honored One I see that beings of Jambu Fipa will themselves receive the benefit of any good deeds they are able to do that accord with the Buddha's teachings. That holds true even when the deeds are as small as a strand of hair, a drop of water, a grain of sand, or a mold of dust. After that had been said, an affluent elder named Great Eloquence, because he is replete with the four unobstructed eloquences of meaning, of drama, of phrasing, and of delight in speaking, those rose in the assembly. He had realized non-production, the fruition of Nirvana, long ago, and was appearing in the body of an extremely affluent, affluent, affluent elder, only to teach and transform those in the ten directions. Sutra, putting his palms together respectfully, he asked a stubborn sattva. Great Lord, after people in Jambuvipa die and their close and distant relatives cultivate merit by making vegetarian meal offerings and doing other such good deeds, will the deceased obtain merit and virtue significant enough to bring about their liberation? Earth Star replied, Elder, based on the awesome power of the Buddhas, I will now espouse this principle for the sake of beings of the present and future. Elder, if beings of the present and future, when on the verge of dying, hear the name of one Buddha, one Bodhisattva or one Pratika Buddha, they will attain liberation whether they have committed offenses or not. Commentary, putting his palms together respectfully, he, the elder, asks, Earth Star Bodhisattva, Great Lord, after people in Jambuvipa die and their close and distant relatives cultivate merit by making vegetarian meal offerings for the Tripadura and doing other such good deeds, will the deceased obtain merit and virtue significant enough to bring about their liberation, being freed of their offense karma? Earth Star Bodhisattva replied, Elder, based on the awesome power of the Buddhas. You see, Earth Star Bodhisattva does not claim that he has any great awesome spiritual power. Instead, he says, based on the Buddha's great awesome spiritual power. Why? This means that he respects the Buddha, so always names the Buddha before himself. I will now expound this principle briefly for the sake of beings of the present and future. Elder Earth Star Bodhisattva goes out again. If beings of the present and future, when on the verge of dying, hear the name of one Buddha, one Bodhisattva, or one Pratika Buddha, one who enlightens two conditions. They will attain total liberation whether they have, they have committed offenses or not. How come one can eliminate his offense karma by hearing the name of one Buddha, one Bodhisattva, or one Pratika Buddha at the time of death? It is because at the time of death, one's life source 
composed of warmth, breath and consciousness ends. Once life source ends in this order, first there is no warmth and no breath, then consciousness leaves. When these three things end for someone, his life ends. Someone dies when his life source ends. When the bird is about to die, its droppings are set too. When a person is about to die, his words are kind too. At the time of death, people discover their conscience. Hence, noticing and reflecting on everything they did right and wrong. They know where they were really wrong and become penitent. Once they are repent, repentant, once they are repentant, then even if they only hear the name of one Buddha, one Bodhisattva or one Pratika Buddha, they will eliminate any offenses, good rules and offenses. The time of death is most critical. It is precisely at this time that good thoughts come forth. Why do we usually recite the Buddha's name? We recite homage to Amitabha Buddha to prepare ourselves from forgetting the time of death since we typically recite. We will not forget the time of death. If you wait until the time of death to recite and develop good thoughts, then it will be difficult. Of course, if such good thoughts do occur, they will be very effective as long as you are repentant, all offenses are eliminated. Sutra, when men or women laden with offenses who failed to plant good causes die, even they can receive one-seventh of any merit dedicated to them by relatives who do good deeds on their behalf. The other six sevenths of the merit will return to the living relatives who did the good deeds. It follows that good men and women of the present and future who cultivate why they are strong and healthy will receive all of the benefit derived. The arrival of the great ghost of impermanence is so unexpected that the deceased one's consciousness is first wrong in darkness and obscurity, unaware of offenses and blessings. For 49 days, the deceased are as if deluded or deaf, or as if in cause where their karmic retributions are being decided. Once judgment is fixed, they are reborn according to their karma in the time before rebirths are determined. The deceased suffer from thousands upon thousands of anxieties. How much more is that the case for those who are fall, who are to fall into the bad destinies? Throughout 49 days, those whose lives have ended and who have not yet been reborn will be hoping every moment that the immediate relatives will earn blessings powerful enough to rescue them. At the end of that time, the deceased will undergo retribution according to their karma. If someone is an offender, he may pass through hundreds of thousands of years without even a day's liberation. If someone's offenses deserve a fivefold relentless retribution, he will fall into the great house and undergo incessant, incessant suffering throughout hundreds of millions of ends. Commentary, when men or women who practice the five precepts and the ten goodnesses laden with offenses who failed to plant good causes die, even they can receive one-seventh of any merit dedicated to them by relatives who do good deeds on their behalf. Although they receive the five precepts and the ten goodnesses, they do not create any good causes or, or do good deeds. They create many offenses 
if after their death their relatives create some small amounts or large amounts of blessings for them.